Hello, Mart. I am your host, Crashmaster, and welcome to CM12 News. Thank you all for tuning into YouTube, and especially on the channel today. It is very, very nice to see you all today. Hopefully, you all are having a good day as well. So, yes, without wasting any time, let's get right into the story, shall we? Or the stories of today, I should say. Now, unfortunately, the pandemic has been very very dreadful on all of us from ages young to ages old it's affected many people and it is very 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 sad and i could discuss over many topics on how to not worry about it what people are doing and so forth and while that's not a bad thing i think the subject is that we should all talk about something a little less important obviously but in a sense makes us all happier now i am going to discuss many segments of today on what exactly you can do during this um during your break in a sense for many of you kids young adults even some adults in a sense with your children um friends families all across the world what you can do to brighten up your day just a little bit and hopefully for those around you as well so for today we are going to discuss segment number one of this video um rick and morty you know it you love it and can't get enough of it seriously you cannot get enough of this show created by dan Harmon and justin Rowland, it's one of the best tv shows animated ever to exist on the face of the earth and who knows how far maybe aliens are watching who knows but minds there has been news that this well whenever this is uploading on May 3rd, 2020, this year, this May 3rd, five more episodes are coming out. Yes, that is right. The second half of season four, the last slash next five episodes are on their way. Now, we have all six of them coming soon, relatively. On May 3rd, episode six, season four, will be premiering on 11.30 p.m., on Adult Swim, Easter Standard Time, which is around the New York slash North America, New York, all the way down to Florida segment of the world, varies very much. Unfortunately, it's not exactly straight line. It depends where you're really watching it. But all episodes will be actually as well coming on Adult Swim at 11.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, we have episode 6, Never Ricking Morty. Episode 7, Promortius. Episode 8, the Vat, of the Vat of Acid episode. Episode 9, Child Rick of Mort. And episode 10, Star Mort. Return of the Jerry, or Jerry. It sounds like Jerry. Now, it will be releasing May 3rd, May 10th, 17th, 24th, and 31st of this month of May. So you know this month is going to be amazing with all the content of Rick and Morty we are having. Now. Prometheus, which is episode 7, could be a reference to Prometheus the movie, which released back in June 8th, 2012, which, you know, it's coming out May 10th, so it's just about a year around the time it was released, May 10th, June 8th, it's not that far of stress in a sense, about a month, although this movie was, um, came out way back in 2012, so, eh, it's a bit of a stretch. Although, it was about two brilliant scientists leading an expedition that led them to discover a clue of the origins of mankind on the planet Earth for them to explore the darkest parts of the universe. Very, very nice. And it could also be a reference, although I say a little less honestly on this, on this reference, of the Titan god Prometheus, who was giving the task of creating mankind out of clay. Will we see some sort of plot emphasis or idea of this rick and morty episode coming from the, either of this two possibly maybe not this series does like to troll us sometime but who knows maybe rick could could be taking his grandson morty or maybe he could be going on an adventure with someone else smart or one of his other parallel selves to explore the darkest parts of the universe although rick and morty and summer and sometimes the whole family do that quite a bit 
or maybe Brick could be exploring another miniverse or universe, or maybe he's going to create his own civilization. Who knows? This series has infinite possibilities, just like all the infinite timelines. Now, Star Mort Return of Jerry, or Jerry, although I'm pretty sure it's Jerry, is obviously a reference towards the sixth Star Wars movie that released May 25th, 1983, Star Wars Episode Six: Return of the Jedi, which was the second... True, um, ending of the second, which was the third movie of the second trilogy of films, which was about the rebellion, um, the rebellion beating the Empire's massive second Death Star, and the end of Darth Vader. Now we can actually see this quite a bit, just like a um, a small clip of the Vat of Ap Acid that Rick and Morty apparently jump into, and the Star Mort Return of Jerry episode, which seems to show Summer. And her friend, um, who was uh, Tammy, aka the wife of Bird Person, aka the one who actually killed Bird Person, dueling in a lightsaber battle, which you know that's gonna be amazing, especially, who knows, maybe Rick will create the lightsabers? Most likely, since they actually are one of the most famous sci fi franchises on television and famous franchises in film history, mashing together. Who knows? It seems like it'll be quite an episode. I cannot wait, especially since that's going to be the last episode of Season 4. Will we get a teaser for Season 5, maybe? Will we get a release date? There has been the 70-episode deal since the end of Season 3. So, who knows? Let's see how long the series can last, because you know it's going to be amazing, and we are all waiting for that Rick and Morty content like crazy. Now... Each episode, as just a reminder, each episode is set to premiere on Adult Swim at 11.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is the New York to Florida section of America. So just make sure to line up the calendars or at least your timing because, you know, the calendars sometimes. But who knows, wherever you live in the world, just make sure to line up your time on Adult Swim so you don't make sure you don't miss it. Trust me, I'm going to have to record or stay up pretty late because unfortunately I live in this part of the world, but uh, whatever. Anyway. We also have a new show coming on May 8th on Hulu, which is sort of similar to Rick and Morty in some sense, or maybe it'll be completely different. The animation is certainly the same in some sense, as it's being created by Justin Roiland, co-creator of Rick and Morty, and Mike McMahon, or Mike McMahon. Sorry for <laughs> ruining your name right there. Sometimes I'm not that great. Um, so, the show is called Solar Opposites, and it is premiering on Hulu May 8th. And the plot is about a family of aliens who move to the middle of America. And there's already a couple teasers and trailers on it. I've got to say, it looks very, very nice. I know I'm going to be all over that show. Will it be a crossover, possibly, with the Solar Opposites family and the family of Rick and Morty, the Smiths? We'll have to see. I mean, it could be. I mean, unlike Gravity Falls and other crossovers with The Simpsons or Family Guy and whatnot, you know, Rick and Morty is a less family-friendly show, obviously, because it has a bunch of swearing and cursing and all sorts of nasty stuff. But, hey, Justin Rowling works on both shows. Maybe there might be actually a chance for a crossover. That would be amazing. Now, moving on to our second segment of this episode will be Terraria, one of the best games ever to come out with over 30.3 million copies sold, but it seems that one of the most popular games of the century, or even uh, pretty much since it came out in May 16, 2011, is ending, unfortunately, Mods. in some small way at least, considering the fact that the fourth and final major update known as Journey's End, aka 1.4 of Terraria, is releasing on May 16th, which is marking the ninth anniversary of the game. Very, very sad, especially since it was so close to the 10th anniversary, but who knows? Maybe this is just a troll in some sense. Maybe it'll finally, maybe it'll make a last update on 1.5 or 1.4.1 or 10. Who knows on the year 2021 to make the 10th um, anniversary. I mean, Minecraft had its 10th anniversary quite a while ago, so... Who knows? These two games are very compatible in some si in some cases, especially since they do have Easter eggs referencing each other. In a sense, they're almost like brothers. They are very, very much what some of the best games that have ever come out in the 21st century, and it's very sad to see the fact that it is possibly ending. 
since this is the final and fourth major update. Now, besides the sad news, once again, remember we're keeping this very, very happy. This update will be released May 16th um, this year, and it is coming out with loads of content. It is coming out with over 800 items, which is roughly an increase of 120% of what the game currently contains now. Although some reports have said that it may contain over a thousand new items, considering the fact that the max ID number is apparently changing from 3,929 to 4,985. So at least a thousand and fifty-six items. That is amazing. Packed with so many spell books, weapons, creatures, and so much more coming out of this. Especially some things that I personally like, like new food options, emotes, master mode and journey mode, which is possibly one of those mostly most likely journey mode to be a new creative mode. Although this mode will have is different from Minecraft's creative mode and other game modes, especially since you would need to earn some of the items rather than the, the game just giving it to you possibly from playing in survival mode and equipping and, and equipping or using or even touching or gathering items they could possibly be in a creative mode we will have to see and some other things that are of course that i am very very fascinated and excited by is golf new mini biomes and a diamond toilet I don't see why not. <laughs> and you know, Mars, I'm going to be all over that master mode. Because, hey, Crash Master, just saying. Although, normal mode sometimes can be a bit difficult. And I have to get through the hard mode slash and expo mode. And now master mode? Oh, boy, man. But, hey, Crash Master's got to be a master at something. And it's not just crashing. It's got to be more than that. Who knows, Mars? Who knows? Or maybe I'll just stick to crashing. Although, I really doubt it. Now, let's see. Since I've been talking about Terraria, and I mentioned we have its brother, in a sense, we have to talk about, of course, our third segment, Minecraft. Now, Mike, news of the new Minecraft update, 1.16, aka the Nether update, have been ramping up exponentially. Considering the fact that there's been so many teasers and forums and posts on what it's going to contain and how many new things, and it just keeps updating and updating with smaller and smaller the window appears to be considering the fact that it rumored has been spreading lots and lots of rumors have been spreading about it apparently not being released too late into 2020 but rather in the first half of 2020 which is january through june now while there has been no real evidence in a sense to be um to be expected by this as it's implied that this information is coming from certain things like the minecraft gamepedia site which is not too bad of an information sort of website if you want to be for minecraft it says that it'll be released in the first half of 2020 which is january to june and as we see the fourth month of the year april has just ended so it will have to be either from the start of may all the way to the end of june which is only a two month gap so we'll have to see if it releases will it be hopefully around this time are they waiting until the last segment of june so that way all studies will be canceled and you can enjoy all that sweet sweet minecraft content are they waiting to release it not just for the plays but also the fact that since it's hot outside you'll also be hot inside in the nether only time will tell mice <sighs> Why can't they release a freezer burn update or something? Well, they did do that, didn't they? Yeah. Why can't they release, like, a winter update as well? They were going to add, like, the snowy mountains and whatnot. I know they have polar bears. Can they add penguins and, like, I don't know, like, a ice set? Seriously, I hate the heat mites. I hate it. <clears throat> anyway, um, yes, um, this release date is a possibility. Could be May 17th, since the release of the game was actually on May 17th. 2009 could it be the mark of the 11th anniversary maybe maybe not but hey it's a slim chance so, but who knows maybe maybe not they have surprised us before haven't they now there are many items going to be included in this update as well as many mobs and many new features to the nether including soul items such as the soul fire torch lantern and campfire which i cannot wait to get my hands on honestly crying obsidian ancient debris nether gold or a respawn anchor t um a target and many 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 new mobs including the piglin strider hoglin and zoglin very very nice including a lot of new armors 
in a sense, well, one new armor and some new tools slash weapon, which is made from netherite scraps, which combined with gold ingots can be netherite ingots, which is an armor even stronger than diamond, apparently. From armor set to tool set to weapon set with the sword, it is going to be a very, very strong and really, really hard challenge to get that netherite ore. Although, personally, I like sticking with diamond, but hey, if I ever need it, of course I'm going to get it. <laughs> as well as new places known as the Ruin Portal, which is a new little area slash ruin of what appears to be another portal, and so Sand Valleys, Warp Forest, Basalt Deltas, and a new enchantment called Soul Speed, which apparently is an enchantment that you can equip on your boots to make you run faster or maybe normal. It's a little iffy depending on it. It has We still have to wait until the full game comes out. But hey, Marts, if you actually have the time, trust me, go on the Minecraft Gamepedia website and look at the music dish section or the nether update section, considering the fact that there is a new music disc as well coming up. Music disc 13, although... A little confusing since there's a music disc 11 and 13, even though it's not technically 13, but whatever. Technically, music disc 13, not the number, the actual, like, um, amount, is going to be called Pig Step, which is a red music disc with a little bit of a goldish tint in the middle, apparently, which is very, very cute. I got to say, it is not if one of my top three Maybe top two or one, I would have to think about, although I do love Chirp and Mole is one of my favorites. But this music disc was actually not composed by C418, one of the music composers for Minecraft's all of the music discs, but rather Lena Rain, which is very strange, but I gotta say she has got some talent, and I hope they actually make a lot more music discs in the future, considering that this beat is just so jamming. I gotta say, Mods, I very much love it, so I hope you all love it too. Trust me, give it a listen on the Minecraft Gamepedia website. It is worth it. Good job, Lena Rain. Hopefully you come back to make a few more um, music discs or um, some music for Minecraft in general, because it is something different and very, very nice. Next, we also have news on the new Minecraft game, Minecraft Dungeons. That's right, Mites. You had it for, you had Minecraft for everywhere, from your phones to your computers to your consoles. Then you also have Minecraft Education Editions, and as well as technically a new game in a sense for studying from lots of schools all over the world. Then you even got Minecraft earth not the event itself but the game which is a mobile game that you can actually even play inside considering what's going on which is very very cool but now technically the fourth minecraft game if you want to say or third you know education edition just like other editions but whatever nonetheless a new minecraft game minecraft dungeons yep that is wrong my minecraft Dungeons, an all-new action-adventure game inspired by classic dungeon crawlers set in the Minecraft universe. So, who knows? Will this be a game maybe similar to Minecraft Story Mode? Will it be actually set in the universe? Will it have lore containing as well, like Steve, Alex, Notch, maybe even Jeb and Herobrine? We'll have to see. Will it be just like Minecraft Story Mode inside the lore of the Minecraft universe? Who knows, we'll have to see, but we ha won't have to wait too long, considering the fact that it is coming out relatively soon from, since it got pushed back quite a bit, probably to basically finalize w all the details, it is officially coming out on May 26th. So in a couple weeks, near the end of May, not too bad, I gotta say, I know I'll be playing it on this channel because it is gonna be so much fun, Might. It's gonna be so much fun. Now, according to this, You'll be able to fight your way through all new action adventures on coming to the PC, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PlayStation 4. So sorry, old gen consoles, you might not be getting this anytime soon. But who knows? Maybe there could be a backwards compatibility sort of sort of thing as well, although reversed. Who knows? We'll have to see. But hey, if you got a PC, which is most likely, you can play it on there. So, hey, not bad. Now, the gameplay consists of fighting, which is going to have loads of new weapons and spells and attacks, apparently, using melee swings, hang back with range attacks, or even use shields, possibly, as an idea, heavy armor, or you could just tank your way through like a boss with all of them. Who knows? Now, you can personalize your character and unlock unique items and weapons, enchantments, 
and special attacks, which I gotta say, I think I remember seeing something like a lightning sword, or no, a lightning hammer, which is probably a reference to Mjolnir, Thor's hammer from the Marvel comics, which I gotta say, I'm gonna love, because I love electricity, and it is very, very cool, if I can get something like that on a sword, or maybe on my famous Crash Master Diamond Helmet, who knows, I gotta say, I'm gonna very much love this, but also, it's not just about fighting, it's about surviving. You have to explore action-packed, treasure-stuffed levels, all in an epic quest to save the villagers and take down the evil Arch Illager, which, by the way, is the main plot of this game. The Arch Illager, previously an outcast among the villagers, obtains the Orb of Dominance and becomes corrupted by its evil power. Now, with a full army of villagers, he's taking over the overworld, one village at a time. Only you and maybe your allies can stop him. Who knows, as well, you can play this online up to four people. You and three friends can team up to take down this Arch Illager and stop him from taking over the villages and the overworld entirely. It is a very, very great sounding adventure. I cannot wait this. If you love Minecraft and Minecraft Earth and the Education Edition, which I gotta say, I very much love it because I'm a big fan of math and science, you know you are gonna love this game. Of course, how could you not? It is Minecraft. It's Minecraft, I mean, come on, who doesn't love Minecraft? Now, it also says that there will also be possibly a new book coming around in the, in the next few, in the future, which I will not give dues on that just yet, although if you would like, you could look into it. But since we're on the topic of books, why don't we talk about another book that's not the Arch Elliger one, but another one that is coming also this May, News about the newest Minecraft novel known as Minecraft The Voyage, which is created by Jason Fry on releasing on May 5th, just in a couple days when I'm recording this. Who knows? It could just drop by the minute this video um, this video releases. Who knows? But nonetheless, May 5th. So many things happening in May. See, Mites? Not too bad. Now, Jason Fry is the New York Times best-selling author of Star Wars The Last Jedi and has written or co-written more than 40 novels, short stories, and other works set in the galaxy far, far away. So it is pretty, pretty damn cool to see a writer from the Star Wars franchise coming into contact with Minecraft. You know this is going to be super cool, especially since we did actually a while back get a Star Wars texture pack which I gotta say is very, very nice. You know I love me some lightsabers, the blue one especially swinging that beast around, although hopefully I don't get my hand chopped off, especially stabbed anywhere. Yikes, seriously, be careful kids, be careful. Now, the story apparently is about a, a certain character named Stax the Stonecutter, who has a peaceful life, if unremarkable, in a small town in the overworld, so we know that much. But it says that the son of the great adventurers and wise builders, Stack prefers an easier life. Huh, what do you know? He loves to tend to his garden and play with his cats all day, rather than venturing out into gardens and well into rather than venturing out exploring the surrounding lands, it's quiet on his estate, even lonely sometimes. But hey, it suits him well. But Moritz, it seems that things are very, very, very ominous around. His solitude is shattered by a mysterious stranger of which is arriving with a band of merciless raiders. Ooh, that is not good. In one terrible night, Stax's old life is taken from him and he is left stranded in the middle of nowhere, angry and alone. He's never left home and now he knows why. Everything beyond the boundaries of his little town is scary and dangerous. Yes, that is right. But as he begins his long journey back, Stax encounters fascinating travelers who show him that there's more to the overworld than marauding pirates and frightening mobs. There are beautiful lands to explore, fantastical contraptions to build, and new friends to meet. Isn't that nice, Mites? This book sounds amazing. As May has taken losing everything he once knew, but on his adventure, Stax finds something more valuable than all the diamonds in the overworld. A whole wonderful world that's just waiting to be explored. Isn't that mo nice, Mines? Isn't this a book that you just want to read? I know I'm going to read it because you know I love Minecraft, especially considering the fact that I plan to buy more books, and the first two I've ever owned were well, The Crash, ironically, I know, and we also have The End.
which I have actually not reading too much of, but you know I am going to be reading quite a bit of. Now, since we're on the topic of Minecraft, how and the topic on books a while back, how about we skip all the way next to our segment from before, in a sense, or this segment as well, books. Specifically, two new books that are coming out very, very soon. But we're going to be talking about one since it's coming out this May. And I have to say, Mice, this book is only meant for the bravest of FNAF players. That is right, Mice. We are talking about the next third book in a series of a five book series created by Scott Cotton himself, the bang man who created the FNAF series. Now, as we all know, there are already two books in this series known as Fast Birth Fright. We have the first one right here, Into the Pit, and the second one right here, Fetch, which I gotta say are very, very amazing, especially since the fact that theorists out there like Darko and MatPat from the game Theorists and Darko are really researching into this, and I'm really, really getting inside of it as well, so who knows, maybe I'll make some FNAF lore videos. Have been thinking about it for a while. Leave a comment if you wanna see something like that. But my, the next book in this five book part series is entitled 135 a.m. with a mysterious sort of animatronic doll looking girl very very strange huh sort of looks like baby at first but in some thumbnail I once actually randomly saw from a youtuber it shows that it looks like another doll named Ella possibly one of them that Charlie owned mentioned in the in the Freddy files very very strange now, this book is created, obviously, as I said, by Skull Coughlin, created the FNAF franchise, as well as Andrea Reigns Wagner, who helped create the second book, and Ellie Cooper, who helped create the first book in the series, which also does feature cover arts from the fan-favorite artist Lady Fizzy, who created the teasers for FNAF The Fourth Closet and made drawings of Funtime Chica in Ultimate Custom Nights during the commercial slash ad segments of the game that we all know we very, very loved and very, very hated because it was so annoying. But anyway, you can check out her DeviantArt DeviantArt and Tumblr because there is a lot of amazing artwork there and I highly recommend you check it out. Now, the plot apparently is about three characters, Delilah, Stanley, and Devin, who apparently has been being left behind in, in, a, in his way of life. Often from a young age and recently divorced, Delilah escapes deeper into her dreams each night, in desperate need of a wake-up call. Stanley is newly dumped, stuck in a dead-end job for a mysterious employer and unable to connect with anyone, and Devin, abandoned by his dad and ignored by his mom, can't understand why love and friendship come so easily to everyone except him. Unfortunately, in a callous world of Five Nights at Freddy's, it's always in the depths of loneliness when evil creeps in. Oh boy, Mars, doesn't this sound like a very scary book? I gotta be saying. And that is just one of the three stories, apparently, in it. Could these three characters be represented in the three stories? Is this just one story? We'll have to see, especially since the book is coming out very, very soon on... Let's see, let's see. Where's it coming out on? According to this, May 5th. Ha! Huh, what do you know? Another event coming out on May 5th. So many things times, so many things to do in this little amount of time of May. But you don't need to obviously do this all in May. These are just options. Now, mites, I have to say there's so many things that we can do in May. So everything's not obviously going to be fully terrible. But let's do a fifth slash mini segment. A tiny, tiny little segment on our final things to do in May. Now, the final slash mini segment is also about Dragon Ball. Which is actually pretty nice considering that on May 9th, it is going to be something called Goku Day. Now, I'm not exactly sure what it is about, but you know, there might be a Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 video coming out that day on the channel. Who knows, maybe I'll be fighting against Goku, maybe I'll be playing as Goku in the in some of the stages. Who knows, maybe I'll even be able to train with Goku. It would be very, very nice to master some of my god powers, but we'll have to see from the main man himself. Now, also, as well as um, Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2, I might be doing there's also Dragon Ball Heroes specifically the next episode of Super Dragon Ball Heroes that's right my season 2 episode 3 or episode 23 of the whole franchise will be titled rematch with formidable foes Turles and Bojack 
Now, I have to say, Marks, I am re actually really enjoying the series in certain areas, especially with the villain Hearts, which I have to say, I might give a breakdown on Hearts as one of the favorite villains I personally like, although he's more like an anti-hero to me, but shh, I can't say anything yet. It's not confirmed on the channel, but hey, if you want it, leave a comment below because i got to say I very much liked his artistic drawing, st like the style of his attacks, the whoever drew him. And it's just amazing. Now, this episode, season 2, episode 3, or episode 23, is rumored to come around late May. But my prediction is that it will be coming around May 13th. Which is not really late May. It's more mid-May, mid to early May. But my my only reason for this really is the fact that episode 21 came out on March 5th. And episode 22 came out April 9th. So, you know, could be a little change of pace. Although, with everything happening i'm sure animation could be a little bit late in production in some sense but hey whether it's um late may um early may mid may i cannot wait to see turles and bojack back in especially turles he was actually one of if not one of my favorite opponents when I ever fought him in Dragon Ball's Universe 2, I gotta say that timeline switch, Mir and Toa up to something, and I have to stop them obviously. But Turles, I wish you good luck wherever you went. Oh boy, I gotta say, he actually had some pretty cool attacks as well. And as to close out this final segment, um, but just like Goku Days airing May 9th, another holiday is actually very much approaching us, which is May 25th. Back to the Future 3 day. That is right, Mars. The Back to the Future 3rd film, Back to the Future 3, came out on May 25th, 1990, which is nearly exactly 30 years ago. Isn't that amazing, Mars? That is. Just like 2015 and 2019, or Back to the Future 1 and 2, Back to the Future 3, this day is coming upon us. Now, Mars, I know this was my first time, and I'm pretty sure I was a little rusty, especially since I haven't recorded in quite some time. I'm very, very sorry about that. But thank you all for tuning in into this little new segment. It was my first time. Hopefully, I could do this a little more often when there's a lot of big stuff coming out. We had everything from books to FNAF for Minecraft, Terraria updates, um, Rick and Morty, eh, Dragon Ball, Back to the Future, it was amazing. Now, if I didn't miss any stuff, it was because it was either by accident or I felt like it wasn't just too important, but it's mostly because I probably never heard of it. But hey, Mites, you can't blame a guy for trying. So hopefully during this very, very hard time for all of you, you and the family or you by yourself or with anybody that you know of can just enjoy some of these things that really a, a lot of people don't have sometimes the time to do. But since this thing, there's been a lot more time. So even though it's a very dark time in the history of planet Earth, maybe, just maybe, this video for you watching can give you ideas to help you see the world and just a bit better perspective. You know, Mike? Because sometimes, for me, that's not very easy. And that's why I have this channel in some sense, to help all of you out there brighten your day by watching these videos and hopefully making you laugh and smile. But... Anyways, Mites, hopefully you all enjoyed this video. I know I did, even though it was the first and I was a little bit rusty in some parts, I have to be honest. I had to say I had a very, very nice time making this video. So if you want to, leave a comment below and let me know if you want to see something like this again. Maybe I could do this like in a certain amount of time every two months. Maybe if a bunch of stuff is happening big. Would you like to see me break down the character hearts? Would you like me to? Would you like to see me break down anything else from like the FNAF lore, or maybe even to the Minecraft lore? Game Theory has been doing it quite a bit, a bit of Darko as well for these books, and for the Minecraft history on the Game Theory's channel as well as FNAF, obviously. So who knows? Maybe I'll give a crack at it. I do have a couple theories of my own. You know, I am a theorist. So yes. Hopefully you all enjoyed this video. Hopefully it all gave you ideas to brighten up your day. Please give a like. And subscribe. This is supposed to be the subscribe button. I don't know. It looks like a sandwich. I don't know. I actually am very thirsty and hungry. So I'm getting out of here. And yes, Mart, I will see you all later. Later, Mart.